get into a little bit of a live solve here. I want to make sure I give myself enough time to solve this. So we're going to do some 3D modeling here in On Shape, and the model that we're going to create is going to come from our practice models challenge from a few weeks ago. Uh, what is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? The tolerance is plus or minus two grams. This part is called drill mount. It's a tier five part, so not easy, not an easy part. So let's get into it here with some on shape live 3D modeling, and we'll see if we can solve this model and come up with the correct mass. What is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? Tolerance plus or minus two grams, and this is in plain carbon steel, and the density is 7,800 kilograms per cubic meter. So one thing that I get asked a lot is, you know, what are some strategies, what are some techniques you use to become faster and faster at modeling? And one of those strategies would be to kind of discretize the model. And what I mean by that is look at your models and think to yourself, you know, how would you break this model down into different sections or different features? So without even knowing anything about 3D CAD, you might say that like this section up here, this upper section with the counter bore, that's gonna be one section. This section down here, the main plate down at the bottom, that's gonna be one section. And then this section here, the the rib, that's, that's kind of like a transition between the two, that's gonna be one section. And the more you practice doing things like this, the more you practice kind of breaking down your model into different areas of the model, the better your, your strategy is gonna be for creating that model. So it, it's good to kind of look at the model as a whole, but also kind of get in the habit of breaking it down into different sections. This is also a lot of times how we create things in, in mechanical engineering because it makes it easier for us to make changes when it's like you've got these discrete areas of the model. So then what you have to do is you have to figure out what order you're gonna build those features in. And that takes a little bit more experience, a little bit more practice. But I think that for me, the, the order that I would create this thing in is I would start out by just creating a rectangle, just a regular rectangle for the base plate. Uh, then I would create a revolve here. Now you could do this as an extrude or as a revolve. I just think it's gonna be easier because of how the dimensioning is done to do this as a revolve. And then I would create the, the vertical, the taller vertical rib here. And then I would finish off by creating this, this rib that's kind of sticking out here. And I say finish off because that's gonna give me all of my solid geometry. So I'm gonna start out by creating all my solid geometry. And then after that solid geometry is created, I'm gonna be pretty comfortable going in and adding this cut extrude on the bottom, adding these slots here, adding this C bore up top here. So after I do all my boss extrudes, I'll do my cut extrudes. And then after I'm done with my cut extrudes, then I'll finish off with any final fillets or anything. So I can maybe add in this 42 millimeter fillet and maybe add in these fillets here on the corner. So start out with your boss extrudes, then do your cut extrudes, then do your fillets. And the other part of this is try to kind of discretize a model. Try to take a model and break it up into different sections that you're going to work on. And then, uh, you know, get those sections out of the way and correct first and then go back in and add the fine details. So that would be my advice to anybody who's, uh, you know, who's been asking, you know, do you have any advice for how to, um, you know, how to approach these kinds of models, how to become a model mania wizard, uh, those types of things. Uh, that's that's kind of the best advice I can give you is look at look at the whole model, kind of discretize it into different areas. And then when you're done, go through and start uh, start modeling, start with your bosses uh, and then add your cuts and then add your kind of final details, your drafts, your fillets and things like that. So here we are, we're at the website onshape.com slash free. If you want to start learning 3D CAD today, you could go to onshape.com. Uh, you could sign up for a free account. And when you sign up for that free account, you're going to be able to get in here and create whatever you want. But everything you make is going to be in the public space, which means that anybody can go and they can search and they can find your documents. Now, that's kind of cool because it means you can easily go through and search other people's documents if you need some uh, components for your assembly. But just be aware that this is really meant for users who are trying out the software, trying to learn how to, you know, how to use 3D CAD. Uh, but you're not really going to be able to use it in a professional environment because you're, you know, you're going to be exposing all your work to the world. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but it is totally free. It's a great way to get people started, great to get students started, or maybe even you yourself get started learning a new CAD system. Then if, you know, if your team is ready to do some Onshape together, you could check out that link I showed earlier, uh, onshape.pro slash tutaltoby. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to create a new document. I'm going to call this 24-02-17 uh, space drill mount. Now, because this is a public document, it means that you, 
can search for it. So if you were asking for a tutorial, you can search and you can find this tutorial. And then I'm gonna go to the top plane. I'm gonna begin a sketch. So I just use the S key on my keyboard to bring up that menu. There's the S key again. I'm gonna sketch a rectangle here and we'll give this rectangle the dimensions as are shown on the print. So it looks like this is 90 in this direction and 110 in this direction. Oops, looks like I missed my zero there. Now I'm gonna S key, and I'm gonna turn this into an extrusion, and this is gonna come up to a height of 18 millimeters. So there we go, there is our first feature. Again, kind of discretizing this model into different sections to, to break it down to make it a little bit easier. So front plane, I'm gonna begin another sketch. And for the second sketch, just like we talked about in the game plan, I'm gonna create this as a revolve. So instead of sketching that cylinder as a circle and extruding it up to a height of, um, it's 100 minus 66. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a radius here of 20, and then the height here is gonna be 100 minus 66. And there we go. And now all I need to do is add in my final dimension. So the dimension from the base here is gonna be a dimension of 66. And then the dimension from, it's crazy. It's a dimension from this end of the model to the center of the cylinder. So from this end of the model to the center of the cylinder is going to be at a value of, whoops, I think I just, oh yeah, I S, S keyed and I turned it off. <laughs> it's going to be at a value of 153. So that's the center of the cylinder. So now I could go revolve. And then for my revolve axis, I can choose here, the center of the cylinder. And there we go. Now we've got two of the features from this model, two of the you know, you discretize the model, you break it up into different features, and then you kind of one at a time start making those features. Now, of course, there's other techniques, you know, like uh, uh, a lot of the on shape users that I've seen are very comfortable going through and uh, sketching the entire shape all at once. So like there's plenty of on shape users and SolidWorks users in the chat that would go through and they would create their first sketch and it would look something like this. They would create this shape, they would create this shape like this, they would create this extra line here with an offset. They would create this shape here like this, you know, and then they are like this. And then they would have just a single sketch that they could use over and over and over and over again. And that's fine too. That definitely works. I just prefer to kind of break it up and uh, do them one feature at a time. Just makes it a little easier, especially when the customer comes back to you and says they need to make changes. So now here on the front plane, I'm going to begin another sketch, and this sketch is going to reference the, the previous sketch that I created for the Revolve. So I'll show that previous sketch. I think that's going to make it a little bit easier for me. So now I can click here uh, on this first line, uh, come over with the horizontal line, come back, touch the end point, come off of that end point, and drop an arc, and then I can right away give that the radius value there of 41, and then I can just make a, a vertical line here. Basically, this vertical line is just going to come down to this corner here, I think. And so um, these guys are going to be coincident. Just pick those two and press I. And then these guys here are going to be tangent. So I could maybe uh, just do a little crossing there over both of them and then press T. And look at that. That geometry went nice and black. That's what I like to see. And so now for that other arc, I'll basically do the same thing. Come back, touch the end point, come over here with an arc, click in the background. And I'll say that's got a radius of 69. Nice. And then I can just make a vertical line here. Um, and then bring, you know, bring another line over to here, like so, and then just kind of hook those two together. And so now these are going to be tangent. So once again, I can do that kind of crossing trick, select both of those and press T to make those tangent. And then this one, it's kind of weird. It's got a dimension from here to the center of the, the arc. So from here to the center of the arc. And that dimension is 114. And that's that's kind of the tricky part. That's the part you're probably going to struggle with the most is getting that, that 114 locked down. Now, you could at this point also include that 42 millimeter dimension if you wanted to. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'll just come back in after the fact and create that 42 millimeter with a fillet. So now at this point, we can go into extrude, and then I'm using the tab key here to get through this menu. That rib is six millimeters wide, and then I'm going to go down here to symmetric, and this is going to be um, this is going to be an add, and I'm going to add it to this and this. I also could have just done merge with all there, I guess. Merge with all. So there we go, merging that into those two, and that looks beautiful. I love it. And so now we're going to go front plane again, begin a sketch. We're going to orient the view. And then we could show that previous sketch again. Um, and because then we could kind of reuse that geometry from the previous sketch. So I could take this and this and this. And then I could do a uh, use, like a kind of like a convert entities. 
And then we do have a thin feature coming out of OnCheap. Uh, I didn't, I never tried using it with thin feature here before, but let's see what happens. So if we do thin feature, and then we say we want to use this sketch, and then we say we want that to have a thickness of six, and we want it to be to a depth of 40 and symmetric. Guys, I think that looks like a winner. That looks like a winner to me. So we're going to hit the green check mark there. Boom. That gives us that shape. That looks awesome. And so now it's just a matter of going back through and adding in those final cut extrudes like we talked about. So the cut extrude, you know, might be this face here, begin a sketch, orient the view, and I could create a an angled line that comes over here, a line right to the middle, come down to the origin here. This is a little trick that I've seen some of the Onshape users do. Even though this dimension looks to be about, looks like it's like 8.26 or 6.26, something like that. When I click down here on this lower point, I can let go of my mouse and then I can type in what that dimension is supposed to be. So it's supposed to be eight. I press enter. And that is a nice little time saver there uh, because it, you know, it makes sure that that, that dimension is just kind of right there. Um, even though it, what, that wasn't the actual dimension, like this one here, you'll see it more. This is supposed to be 65 over two. So I type in 65 over two, and then it just pulls the, the value right to that location. Um, really nice time saver. Shout out to all the Onshape users who do that. That definitely helped me learning that. So I'll make that line construction, and then I'll just do a window here and mirror, mirror that geometry across, and then I'll do one final dimension here for the angle here. This is 65, and there we go. Take that and turn that into an extrusion. That's going to be a remove, and we're going to go the through all. Whoops, let's get back to solid here for that remove. Remove. I got to get better at... Uh, switching between those different extrude types and not losing my selection. I always feel like I lose my selection in that workflow. Okay, and now I'm going to create a line here, and this line is going to have a distance of 45, and then I'm going to select that line, and then up here where we've got our offset entities command, we've also got our slot command in on shape. So up here, you've got offset, you've also got slot. So usually you start out with a line, and then once you, once you have that line sketch, you go up here to slot and then you can see that that's going to let you offset that slot to a set distance so we could offset that to to radius six so that'll be 12 for that diameter and now we just need to put in those dimensions so dimension to here 15 and a dimension to here of what is that one 11 looks like 11 to me and then we could maybe do another construction line here. So I'll press Q just to give myself a construction line. I like, I know you don't have to have that construction line, but I just like having it. It just like kind of makes it a little bit easier to quickly mirror that. And these, you know, making them into construction is really just like an old habit. Um, probably don't have to do that in on shape, but so now uh, we're going to turn that into a cut extrude. So we'll do that as a remove and that's going to go through all. What do we think of that? I think that looks pretty darn good. And so now we could do a hole. Uh, so we come up here, we could do a hole, and this is going to um, use the option for mate connectors. It's kind of like a, a good way to wake up the center of a of a you know a cylindrical face like that. And this is going to be a counter bore, and it's going to utilize the dimensions 14, 5. Oops. Wait, what am I doing here? That's gonna be. 25, 5, and this is going to go through. And that one's going to be 14. Okay, 14, 25, 5. Yep, there we go. That looks good. Oh, yeah, that looks real good. So now we've got our fillets to kind of wind this thing down. So there's going to be a fillet here at 42, and that'll be on this edge. And that looks good. And remember, you can do shift enter and that'll take you right back into the same command. And so then I could make this one a radius of 11. And that's going to be these one, two, three, four corners. And with the check mark. And that is how I would kind of approach that part using on shape. So the final steps here would be to. Um, go into my right mouse button on the name of the part choose assign material once we choose assign material here you can see that we can go to um, my two tall toby custom materials we can go to the plain carbon steel 
the check mark, and then we can go into mass properties and we can click on this body and we can see that we are coming up with a mass of 1490 grams, 1490 grams. And so if we return to the PowerPoint, did we get it correct? Oh yeah, we got it correct, baby. First try, that's what I'm talking about. So that is the, uh, that is the workflow for creating this model using Onshape. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. If you did, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Uh, always good to support the channel. The best way to support the channel is like and subscribe. You can also share and reshare. Another great way to support the channel. Rich Penn says GG. Thank you, Rich Penn. I'm going to say GG as well. GG to me. Thank you, thank you. Could create all the extrudes and revolves up to extrude 5 using the same sketch. Yep, that's right. Yep, we talked about that a little earlier. C2, C2I. That's a great point. You could definitely combine your sketches and use your sketches... Um, Use your sketches using like a shared sketch over and over. Yeah, X Machina says, good game, good game. Thank you, thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello.